Okay. Uh, very first variety got up here is the Hypericum Sunburst. Now, this is my next crop. Uh, it is can full. They did not show any buds um, or flowers at this time. Uh, the Hypericum is also known as the St. John's Wort. It's the zone five, the zone eight. This variety will get three three feet to four feet in height, as well as three to four feet in width. Uh, it has a beautiful yellow, small, striking flower to it. it likes, and we grow this in a two gallon. Uh, it just we grow. I like to be a medium but well drained soil. Uh, fortunately, bloom time for this variety is usually from June to July. So um, right now we might not have any buds and blooms, but it is can full and is well rooted. So you can go ahead and plant for your landscape jobs. Uh, green, uh, blue green foliage, drought tolerant, uh, easy grown in average soil. Uh, mulch roots in the winter. Uh, flowers blooms on new wood. Uh, good for hedges. But like I said, this is my next crop. Uh, next picture, please. And uh, the next variety is Hypericum, all very purple. Uh, this variety is also known as uh, St. John's Wort. This variety is on zone six, is on nine. It would get 36 inches, is 30, uh, 30, 36 inches in height, as well as 30, 36 inches in width. Uh, this also has more of a, a yellow flower to it. Uh, we'll scrape through. Um, great thing about this variety, uh, this is a two gallon. I got to change that can size. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but the striking thing about this is not just far, but it's the foliage. It's got more of a nice amber uh, type of foliage for it. That way, it could um, show some good contrast in your landscape. Um, moist but well drained soil. Bloom time for this variety is used from June to October and likes to be uh, the best spot for planting this variety. It's considered you want to do this in a partial shade to full sun. Uh, so you got to be careful where you plant this. A uh, rich velvety purple leaf tips, uh, yellow flowers, but attractive dark red fruit. Uh, low mounting habit makes it a perfect for mass planting. And this variety is considered to be disease resistant, which is a plus. Next picture, please. Now this is the Iris variegata. This is also my next crop. Uh, this, as you can see, it's also known as a variegated Japanese iris. This is zone four to zone eight. It will get 12 inches to 24 inches in height, as well as 20 to 24 inches in width. Uh, it has a beautiful, striking purple flower to it. But unfortunately, flower season for this is pretty well done. Uh, it, we grow this in a 19 centimeter. It likes to be in moist soil. And basically, uh, this is like I said, this is more of a summer bloomer. Uh, even though it doesn't have any blooms on it, what's striking about this right is the foliage. As you can see, it's very, it stands out quite nicely in your landscape. Uh, thrives on the edge of a stream and pond. Uh, a white green with white striped leaves, purple flowers that bloom in June up into July. And this variety is well rooted. Next picture, two, next picture, please. Uh, the Calimitha uh, Nepeta. Uh, Nepeta is one of those varieties. It's, it's just like it, it. It's very fast growing, especially it thrives very well during the summertime. Uh, this is also known as cat mint, uh, lesser cat mint. Uh, this is its own five, its own nine. Uh, this is a gets 12 inches to 16 inches in height, as 12 to 16 inches in width. Uh, it has beautiful white shade flowers, so tiny flowers. And that picture you see this on the uh, left, that's what it looks like right now. As you can see, it's well can full. Uh, Jeff usually gets a good rotation of crops when it comes to trimming this variety. Uh, it likes this is in 19 centimeter. It takes the average soil. Uh, it is recommended you plant this in full sun. Uh, or at least in direction, at least for a good six hours to get this beautiful full effect for this variety. It takes the average water. Uh, water needs for this is low, but you do want to make sure you get it water well to get established in the very first year. Uh, sun loving perennial is perfect for um, the choice of attracting pollinators. Uh, blooms from the early summer into the frost and carries a mint scent uh, that is perfect for rock gardens, and which uh, Kelly says she likes the mint stuff. So but that's nice. So, um, next variety, please. Uh, this is the Salvia May night. This is my next crop. This is over there in S8. Uh, uh, as you can see, it's can full, loaded with buds and flowers. Uh, this variety is zone four to zone eight. It will get 18 inches in height as well as 18 inches in width. Uh, we grow this variety in a 19 centimeter, tolerates most soils. This variety is considered to be deer and rabbit resistance. And, uh, it's, it, you do want to make sure you keep this in a dry uh, area during the course for the winter. It does not like being, what uh, we say around here, wet feet. Uh, it's outstanding perennial with an excellent cold hardiness, uh, bigger and tolerant and heavy clays and soil. 
uh, blooms in the late spring with a profusion of flowers and spikes and reblooms later in the summer when deadhead. It does it is recommended you deadhead this that continues with the uh, uh, with the flowering. If you do that, you will get good continuous flower throughout the, the at least through the summer. And go ahead to the next picture, please. This variety is the Vitex Chicago Lamb Blues. This one of the varieties could be easily forgotten. This is one of our two Vitexes we still have here in the nursery. Uh, this variety is zone five to zone nine. It can be a five feet to six feet in height, as well as six to eight feet in width. Uh, it has a beautiful uh, violet blue flower. As you can see the picture on the right, it's just starting to get some buds on it. So we will be showing some flowers soon. Uh, we grow this in the green, three, ga three gallon. It likes a medium and well-drained soil. Bloom time for this variety is usually from midsummer. It's more of a summer bloomer. Remember, Vitex is a variety. It does take a little time to come out of dormancy. So sometimes your customer might think the plant's dead. They're just late coming out of dormancy. Just keep that in mind for that variety. Um, bloom time for this is midsummer. Uh, refuse from wilt under the pressure of the season. Uh, this is a dark, dark and draper green foliage. Uh, makes the blue plume uh, more vibrant. Uh, blooms best in full sun. Uh, and must have for pollinators and friendly gardens. So this is, as you can see, this, this variety is can full. Uh, you're getting a good bargain for a three gallon. And like I said, this is one of our last of our two Vitex. Uh, next picture, please. Then we have the perennial grass. Okay, thank you. Uh, this variety is also known as blue stem. This is zone four to zone nine. Uh, it will get four feet to uh, six feet in height as well as two, th um, two three feet in width. Uh, this variety is more of uh, September to fe February. It, it's got these little tiny, like, um, like purple, like uh, flowers, like seed pods up on the top and the tip of the uh, the grass. Uh, this is part of the American Beauty series. Uh, it likes to be in medium to uh, dry soil. Uh, good for one, a good winter interest. As you can see, as the when going to the fall, it turns to this beautiful, almost orange amber color. So it gives you two tones of color for your season. Uh, um, Good for corrosion control, um, for well, great for hillsides, really. Uh, best grown in full sun and well-drained soil like many perennials, grasses. It thrives in, in the lean, dry soil, and once established, tolerates long periods of dry conditions. So it's one of those varieties, it, it is drought tolerant. So that's something good to keep in mind. Next picture, please. Uh, the next one, I'm just giving you two bud layers that uh, are just looking really nice right here, right here. We got the pink delight. Also known as butterfly blush. Uh, um, this is zone five, zone far, five to zone nine. I uh, get five feet in height as well as five to six feet in width. It has beautiful pink shades to it. Uh, this is right we throw in the uh, grow in a three gallon. It likes to be moist but well drained soil. Uh, very late, like I said, like I said for, for about this, late coming out of dormancy. Jeff usually have these in preheated house to give them an early start for the uh, next following year. Uh, the only pink butterfly bush that really attracts a lot of wildlife. Uh, it's sweet, smells so sweet as having a, a natural, it's almost having a natural air freshener in your own yard. Uh, but as you can see, it's got lots of flowers, lots of flowers and upcoming a lot of buds to it. So you got some really good buds and blooms coming up to this riding, um, coming up in the next couple of days. Next picture, please. The next one is the white profusion. It's also known as a butterfly bush. Uh, it's on five, it's on um, nine. You get five to six feet in height as well as five to six feet in width. This has a beautiful, pure white flower to it. Um, it likes if we grow this in a three gallon. It likes to be moist but well drained soil. Uh, like I said, late coming out of dormancy. Where let me remind, constantly remind you of that. Let you educate your customers on that. Uh, tall with wide spreads, used to fill in uh, empty space of landscape area with a nice cool color. Uh, best grown and direct sun. And that's basically for all bud lists. Uh, next picture, please. Uh, now this is we uh, this is something a little bit on a uh, yeah go ahead go ahead stroll always so you can see the picture uh, we have still maybe a hundred assorted roses or not roses I'm sorry uh, hostas that we have um, Vince is going to be adding maybe another hundred into our inventory now basically this is basic what's left over from this year's crop. Uh, reason why we're selling it sorted because right now I can't just sell them as a regular one because as you can see that size, they're very big. Uh, some customers just use them just for lands, um, landscape fields and everything like that. But the, as you can see some of the pictures, the next house over, 
you can see the next crop is much more smaller. So what we don't want is your customer to get one the big size and then the next week he orders more, but he's gonna be getting our natural season crop for this year. So we're trying to avoid that. And we still have some good assorted. Uh, Steve Novak did a really good job of selling some really good numbers. I'm hoping uh, everyone else to use them as a prime example to continue doing that because you're doing a really good job of moving these hostas. But I do want to uh, let you know about it. It's going to be a sort, like I said, it's assorted. So basically, uh, the customer is just going to get a, a range of different varieties. We can't just tell you exactly what it is. That's why we're calling it assorted. So, but like, so there's something to keep in mind. Uh, there is a code for it. And, and just if you've got any questions, you could either go to uh, Vince or even Steve because he's already um, handled some of the varieties quite well. Okay, uh, this is the new one we have here. This is the hibiscus. Uh, we have three different, two, you know, some of these varieties got two or three different varieties in, inside the uh, pot. Uh, we're calling this the uh, hibiscus mixed color. Uh, I'm gonna show you up here. This is the item code that Vince is going to be using for this. Uh, we're putting on a quantity of 400 of these. Uh, we had to wait to see exactly how much of these were blooming out this way. Uh, some of the uh, sales uh, who had tours, customers saw this and they actually were interested in this variety. Um, but, uh, we wish we knew there was a big demand for this. We might have did this more, but uh, it's, like I said, there are some of them that are starting to lose some blooms, but some new blooms and buds are coming up for this variety. So this is this is something uh, we got a limited number for this. It's a total of 400, and like I said, uh, this is the item number we're going to use for zero three one three five. It's a they're a combo of like Lucy Ardens and Blushing Bride. So they're you're not I mean some of them are Lucy and Ardens, some are Blushing Bride and Ardens, some you know it's a, just kind of a combo of them all. What do you use for us? Part one color. And I'm pretty sure all of these are the same way. Where I since I put them on, you guys sell through them. Um, this is also known as part of the color perch, so three to seven, uh, 50 foot tall, seven foot wide. Does like the average soil and tolerates alkaline soils as well. Um, urban drought tolerance. This is a columnar perch, so it's great for urban sites. Uh, it has dark, dense green foliage with the white bark as well. So you do get the fall color, which is the golden, and then also in the off season, you get the white bark as well. Um, skip over the ammo like this now, please go to the sandbox. Uh, talked about Tristis like two weeks ago in a 15 gallon. These are the seven gallon, which is our next crop coming on. Um, they do get 70 foot tall, 70 foot wide. They do get fairly large. It is a weeper. Uh, we'll take a wide range of soils and it does like to have wet feet. So avoid those dry spots. Um, it is clay, deer, and wet soil tolerant. Um, this is a graceful weeping growth habit, which makes it an elegant addition to wet areas or nearby stormy water. And next up is our liquid ambar slender silhouette, which is also a sweet gum, zone five and nine, 50 foot tall, six foot wide. Um, flowers and insignificant on these. It's like it's the average moist, well drained soil. It's also gear resistant and also native. Um, it does tolerate the black walnut, tolerates clay, salt, and um, wet soil. This is a stunning, extremely columnar form that does remain very tight as it gets older. The forest green foliage turns to the shades of orange and red in the fall, and it is a relatively fast grower, so it is really good for those urban areas as well as you can see in the picture. These are seven gallon. And can we go back to the amylite can? So this is the amylite can densis. This is a five gallon. Um, right now, these are in future. I wanted to pose a question based off of this picture. Um, if sales would like these or not, they are very full up top, but as you can see towards the bottom, they are a little bit bare. So I'm not sure that this is something that you guys would like to see on our current inventory or not. TMs, ISRs, thoughts for Jeff? It's okay to me, Jeff. Yeah, I think they're okay. Yeah, I don't sell a lot of smaller ammo anchors, but uh, we could give it a go. 
I'd be good with that. Looks looks pretty nice for a five gallon, forty eight inch. I think we're good. Yeah, I think the loose height on these is only thirty or thirty six inch, so they're definitely a lot taller than spec. So I'll get some of these on for you guys. <laughs> 